Thanks for joining me in my kitchen today. We're talking about enchiladas. And I know that probably everybody's mind goes right away to those rolled up things with melted cheese on the top of them. And that is an absolutely delicious kind of enchilada. But I'm going to take you into new territory today. And probably this is the original enchilada because the word enchilada really comes from a contraction of tortilla enchilada or a chilied tortilla. And that's exactly what we're going to do today. We're going to make a red chili sauce and we're going to dip tortillas in it and we're going to sear them in a hot pan and then we're going to serve them no filling in this situation. Everything goes on top. We're going to fold them over and then we're going to top them with some seared carrots and potatoes and cabbage and some fresh cheese. This is one of the most delicious things in the world, and it's really too bad that you don't find them made very often in the United States. But I'm going to show you how you can make them in your own home. Now, we're going to first make that red chili sauce, and it, it, we're working with two different kinds of chilies here. These are the guajillo chilies, and these are the ancho chilies. Now you can obviously tell them apart because these are wrinkled skinned and these are smooth skinned. These look a lot like the New Mexico chilies that you've seen pictures of for sure. And they are a relative of that one. Of course, you'll pull off the stem and then you'll tear them open and let the seeds fall out. Now, for this particular chili sauce, we really do need to toast these chilies. So when you get them all torn open like that. And sometimes I'll just, for ease of doing all of this, I will work with the chilies in what I call big flat pieces like that. Um, I'm going to use a spatula to do the toasting. Some people will do this um, in um, a sort of like throwing a whole bunch of them on here and tossing them around. I usually go this way, just pressing them down. I've got this comal or this griddle over about a medium heat here. And do you notice how they have changed color here as I have lightly toasted them? They get lighter on the inside. Press this guy down, flip him over. Now that one's not quite toasted enough because you'll see that it wasn't quite um, light on the inside. So I'll give it another press. So this goes really fast. You may see a little whiff of smoke, but you don't want to see, <clears throat> see very much of it. I'm going to put these guys into a bowl here. Um, on the side of the griddle, I'm going to put a couple cloves of garlic, and we're just going to let those roast along. But I have all of these now to, um, to stem and seed, and then toast and collect in a bowl. Those are all toasted now. I'm going to cover them with hot tap water. Some people would tell you to put them in boiling water. I think that's actually a little too aggressive for them. It takes out too much of their flavor, but you'll notice that most of them just kind of float on the top like that. So I like to put a kind of heavy small plate on to keep them submerged so that they will rehydrate evenly. <clears throat> now, while those are rehydrating, that'll take about 20 minutes or so, I'm gonna chop up the vegetables that are gonna be a part of this recipe. It's always traditionally in Mexico, potatoes and carrots. Um, I'm not going to peel anything because I like the peels on them. They've all been scrubbed um, and I'm just going to cut them into small pieces now. Now I said I wasn't going to peel them, but what I always do with my vegetables that I'm going to cut into little squares is to sort of square them off a little bit on the outside. So I'm cutting them so that they will be more or less in a, in a square that I can then split lengthwise like that and then cut crosswise. And I have roughly little squares. I just think it looks really beautiful. And the extra little care, I think, pays off in this finished dish. Now, those are going to go into some boiling water that I have behind here. Um, I'm going to season that boiling water um, in two ways. I'm going to give it a little bit of salt, of course, because we want to salt the water that these are cooking in so that they take on 
the saltiness and feel seasoned. But then another thing that we want to put in here, because all of the garnishes for this dish have a little tanginess to them, I'm going to pour in about three tablespoons of vinegar so that when these are drained, they'll not only be salty, but they'll be a little bit tangy. Now all we have to do is wait for these uh, chilies to soak, and then we're going to make that sauce. These are tender now, so I'm just going to take them to the sink and drain them. I can just, I smell that vinegar that's in them. Then put them back in that pan. We'll just leave them sit there, of course, with the fire off of it, off from underneath it there. While we go over to work on the now chilies that have been completely rehydrated. So I, I usually do it this way where I take a pair of tongs and then put all of the rehydrated chilies in here. Almost all of my recipes I write for pitching this soaking liquid. You don't have to do that. You could be using that for the blending of these chilies if you want to. But what I would always say is taste it. If it has bitterness to it, like I'm detecting a fair amount of bitterness and heat in that one, which I don't really want in my finished one, then I'm going to replace it with just tap water. So you need an, uh, about a cup and a half of the liquid, whether you're using your soaking liquid or fresh water. Or, and then I've got some seasonings that go into to it. It's very interesting that in Mexico, they don't use a ton of cumin. Now, for those that are in love with Southwestern food, which has so much cumin, that may come as a big surprise. But in Mexico, they really don't. And because they're not using a lot of it, they rarely toast cumin um, in, in, in a red chili sauce like this. I've got to have about a half a teaspoon of black pepper. You'll see to all of those chilies that it's not highly spiced. And that is actually one of the hallmarks of good Mexican food that you can't pick out all those spices like that. That's about a half a teaspoon of it there. And then we've got the two little pieces of garlic that were roasted on the comal while I was toasting all of those chilies. And they've cooled down now, so I'm going to peel off their little papery skins. They were roasted in the skin to kind of help protect them. Sometimes I don't I take the skin off if I'm working really, really quickly, but it is more reliable if you will take it off of there. Okay, now that goes away. And we're going to just blend this until it's as smooth as we can get it in a regular home blender. That'll take three or four minutes. In this high speed, it'll probably take about a minute or a minute and a half. This high speed blender, to tell you the truth, um, it makes it so smooth that I rarely have to pass it through a strainer. But I'm going to do that because I want to encourage everybody that doesn't have a high speed blender to do this. And the reason that we do it is just simply because a lot of those chili skins will not get ground up real real finely enough that you would just really notice them in the finished dish. Uh, so medium mesh sieve, nothing fancy, nothing very fine. Use a spatula to kind of push it through and you'll see it just goes really easy. There's nothing to this, but I do highly recommend that you take this step. Now in the American Southwest, a lot of times they won't do this step, but I always think that those chili skins sometimes get in the way of my appreciation of the dish. So I take the time to just press it through. So I will show you what this looks like when I get down to the very bottom. It's not going to be very much, but you will see that there are some. I only ran the blender for about a minute or so, and we got a really nice puree out of it. I thought it was going to have all those skins completely, completely pureed. But look at that. That's all chili skins there. Okay, so I'm going to take it over to the sink now because, um, first of all, I'm going to get rid of what was left in the strainer. But the second thing that I'm going to do is to give this a little bit more water because I have to get the 
the consistency of it exactly right. It should be like a sort of thin tomato sauce. You don't want it to be so thick and pasty that it sticks on the tortillas in an uncomfortable way because it, will, it, it won't be a delicious dish. So I'm just adding water to it and now I'm going to season it. This is another thing that's super important here that you get enough seasoning in this. So it'll take almost a full teaspoon of salt to season this. Um, and remember, tortillas, corn tortillas, do not have any salt in them at all. Flour tortillas do, but corn tortillas don't have any salt in them. So I'm gonna use my, the Mexican tradition of how you taste things, where you put a dab on that part of your hand there, and you taste it, and you say, is that salty enough? It should be slightly salty. I'm not even close to it. I've just put two pinches of salt in here. I'm going to put two more because I know that that's what it's going to take. And so I'll give it the next taste. Now, that's where it's supposed to be. It'll have a slightly salty edge because this is a lot of the seasoning in the dish. We have one more of the garnishes to get prepared. And then I'm gonna take you through the steps of making the enchiladas. Um, and that is to work with some cabbage here. Um, I'm gonna take that top piece off. This is Napa cabbage. You can use regular cabbage. You could use Savoy cabbage. I tend to like the Savoy or the Napa because they have a very tender uh, mouth uh, bite to them. Uh, so I like to use these. I'm gonna slice up about half of this. And then we're going to chop up some cilantro to go with it. And that should be enough for four servings, maybe one more slice there. And I'm gonna put it into a bowl. We're gonna season this with salt and vinegar again. That vinegar, that tanginess coming back into this. And now, the cilantro. I'm going to just take a, a handful of cilantro. That should be about a, the right amount. Yeah, some people don't use this when they're making these traditional enchiladas placeras or enchiladas a la plaza. Um, but I like the cilantro in there. Not only is it herbal, but it gives you a really, really beautiful, beautiful look. Okay, scoop that up. And I believe now that with a little bit of salt and a little bit of vinegar, we will be where we need to be here for the... And you can just taste it and determine whether this has enough tanginess uh, to it or not. I'm going to give it just a... That could use just a little more salt, but it's got a nice tanginess to it. So we're making basically a very simple kind of a slaw here. Okay, now we are going to move on to the frying of the tortillas. You have a lot of different choices for how you're going to fry these enchiladas. Now, this particular piece of equipment will look very unusual to you, um, but it is really the replica of what the street vendors in Mexico use, about three times this size. This is one that I happen to find in a Mexican grocery store here in Chicago. Um, it's a little too small to use for making this in a really um, easy way, but you could also use a wok, as you could imagine, that this central section of this frying table, we call it, um, looks like a wok, especially if it was much bigger. So sometimes I will make these in a wok. Um, you could easily use just a big cast iron pan, which I have here. But what I'm going to use today, which I think is the easiest way to do this, is a non-stick. But you're going to need a large non-stick, not just a 10-inch skillet, but a 12-inch skillet. So you're looking for something that is large, so that you'll see when I dip the tortillas into to the chili sauce, they have to kind of spread out in here. Now I'm going to put these over um, a moderately hot fire 
So I've got that on what I would call a medium high. Um, I've already warmed the pan a little bit, but I've now turned it up to what it needs to be. And I'm going to pour in just enough of this oil to coat the bottom of the pan. I'm going to show you how to make one serving of this. Um, this is something that you need to do when everybody is at the table and you're going to make enchiladas for everybody. And I will tell you, they will. when you tell them that you're going to make these enchiladas, they're going to be very excited. So uh, the tortillas don't have to be fresh. They can be a sort of stale tortilla, if you will. You hold it by the side like that, and I'm going to dip it in, and I'm going to put it over here, and then I'm going to just keep going until I've got three of them, more or less, in a single layer in the pan. So dip it in. Let most of the, the marinade fall off. These will take about 20 to 30 seconds on each side to sear. Um, you'll see the tortillas start to get really soft now that it's coated with the, the red chili marinade and it has softened in the oil here. The last one I'm going to flip using a pair of tongs, but you have to be very careful with that because you can also rip the tortilla. Now once they've seared like that, I'm going to fold them over and shingle them onto a serving plate. Just want to shingle them like that. There we go. That looks nice. Now in that same pan, after you have seared them all, I say put them into a low oven. And now I'm going to put all of these carrots and potatoes into this. And we will take, you'll have a little bit of this marinade left at this point, of course. So you'll want to add a little bit of that to the pan. And we're going to toss this until that marinade coats all of these vegetables beautifully and they begin to brown. They're starting to brown nicely and they've absorbed all of that marinade. So about a quarter of these will go. Just I like to just scatter them around the enchiladas like that. Ah, oh, that looks really beautiful. And then we have, of course, the seasoned cabbage to go over the top of that. Right down the center is what I like. Because I like the crunch and freshness of raw onion, I'm just going to make a little slice of onion here that I can, just a thin slice, that's what I think is going to be really pretty here to lay over the top of this. And then a little sprinkling of Mexican queso fresco. Actually goat cheese is really good on these as well. So you have a really gorgeous and super, super delicious meal there. Now that one's all vegetarian. The street vendors in Mexico, especially around Morelia and Pátzcuaro in, in the state of Michoacán, they make these all the time and they'll say, would you like a piece of chicken? And they'll have chicken that is dipped in that same marinade and then seared along with it. Grilled chicken is really beautiful with this. Just think of the kinds of uh, proteins that you could add to it that would make it just right for you. I hope that you will try these enchiladas. They are without a doubt one of my favorite dishes in all of Mexico, so you should make it part of your repertoire. Mm -hmm.